Hey, hey, how you all doing tonight? Huh? It's good. Yo, I, um, I'm addicted to Scotch Finger Biscuits. You guys know what I'm talking about? Those, I love them so much I ate both. <laughs> then I moved on to another one, and before you know it, I'm consuming a whole packet. Um, and I'm working up to it, but next week I think I'm ready for the Scotch Fiesta. <laughs> I'll get there. Um, yeah, I used to live in like a kind of a dodgy neighbourhood, but I, you know, I didn't really care. Um, I was single at the time, you know, I didn't have to care about anyone else but myself, and you know, who's going to attack me? <laughs> Problem was, I didn't want to be that guy on the news that had to explain what happened next door. <laughs> like that's what I was most worried about. Like being that guy that had to pretend he didn't see it coming for months. Oh man, no, no, I don't know what, don't know what's happened. He was such a nice guy, you know. He just always said hi, collected my mail when I was away, put it under the door, knew exactly what day I was going to be back so I could hide everything. <laughs> you know, but you know that if that guy was telling the truth, he'd be like, man, I'm surprised it took this long for something to happen. That guy's a fucking psycho. <laughs> He lit my bin on fire because my dog wouldn't shut up at night time. Man, um, but I'll tell you what though, it was kind of like, it, was, it wasn't a, it was a bit dodgy, but it wasn't too bad. Like, they had what I like to call honest crooks there, right? Like, they wouldn't break into your car, but if you left it unlocked, they'd take stuff out of it. <laughs> so what happened was I left my car unlocked and um, I come out the next day and like, oh my... My glove box is open and my sat nav's missing and nothing else but my breath mints are gone. <laughs> so that's weird. <laughs> Took my sat nav and my breath mints. So I went into the police station. I'm like, look, I just need to report some stolen items. Um, should be pretty easy, guys. Uh, basically, you're just looking for a junkie with a sense of direction and fresh breath. <laughs> Normally they'd, uh, they'd like the idea of someone that was giving them hints, at, you know, where they could find a, find a cr criminal. But I think that when, when I walked in, the problem was, like, I realised later, you can't really, you can't really, com like, sort of explain a crime when you look like someone that would commit one. <laughs> like, the, they thought it was going to be easier than that. They're like, oh, the dude's handing himself in. <laughs> I tell you what though, I mean, nothing ended up getting investigated on that one. And I think just in general, as I've gotten older, I think that I found cops less intimidating. Like when I was younger, I used to remember cops used to ride in SS Commodores. They'd like, all the hoons would be driving the same cars as the coppers. They'd be doing burnouts and stuff, you know? Like you just didn't want to mess with a cop car. I sent a cop go past the other day driving a Camry. <laughs> Police Camry, oh, very hybrid of you, mate. Save a few, uh, few dollars on gas, I bet. Very efficient. I, I think if I got pulled over by a copper driving a Camry, I'd be like, oh, no thanks, mate, I don't need a taxi, I'm driving. <laughs> but to be fair, though, the most intimidating cop on the force in Canberra, you guys would probably understand, Constable Kenny the Koala. <laughs> That's some scary shit, man. You got a six foot marsupial. That guy pulls me over, I'd just be like, oh. I'll, uh, I'll just take the ticket, man. Because apparently you guys all have chlamydia. <laughs> all right, guys, thank you. You've been awesome. I've been Marky Worthington.